Thank you, SharePoint, for letting me know. We pop out of the debug database tables. <laughs> SharePointless. Hey guys, Darren Nees here. I'm super excited to show you a shopping cart slash point of sale screen that I've done in Power Apps. And I'm gonna step through every step of the way with you here in this video. So let's check out the end result. So a customer will bring their vehicle into the garage for service work to be done on it, like an oil change or new tires. The screen pulls in customer and car information and allows the user to create a sale with multiple items of work to be done. At the bottom, subtotal, sales tax, and the grand total will be calculated and displayed, ready for the order to be finalized. Next, let's look at the data it will deal with. Of course, it pulls in customer and car information, but the screen creates sales and the line item details, which will make up all of the order to be placed. So be sure to stick around for the whole video so you don't miss any of the details. All right, guys, we are ready to work on the sales edit screen here. Where we left off last time is that we actually did some work on these cascading dropdowns. So in order for someone to place an order with this garage, the person interacting with the customer needs to select what type of job that they're going to perform, that garage is gonna perform on the customer's vehicle. So we needed these job types, category, the job type, and the subtype to be laid out the way that we did in the previous video to have cascading dropdowns. So that is the first portion of this screen. If you didn't happen to see that video and you already understand how cascading dropdowns work, no biggie. What we have here is a single database table in which this particular screen populated. So we've got categories, job types, sub job types, and it edits records within a single SharePoint list. And then for the sales edit, what we're doing is, is we're looking at that data source, job types, we're doing a distinct on the category and we're listing them here. The second drop down, what we're doing here is first we're filtering on the category that was selected in that first drop down. Then we're going to do a distinct within that for the job types. Of course, we're going to sort it as well. And the last one is going to do the same thing. It's going to link to this previous one and it's going to filter on that. So just wanted to sort of review that. Now, really what we need to have here, before we can start selecting job types and jobs that are gonna be performed on a vehicle, we need to know what associated customer uh, is being attached to the sale. What customer walked in the door for this sale? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run this. We'll get the menu system. Now, <laughs> if you ever have a menu system like this, sometimes you gotta make sure it's always at the top like this. I always make sure the spinner's at the top as well. So that's pretty common. If you've got some UI elements on the screen that should be on top of everything else, then if you add any more controls, you always got to make sure those controls that should be at the front, you always got to make, you always got to bring them to the front again. So we'll run this and we've got customers here. All right. So we got customers and um, let's just click on Adam Lyman. We'll go into this a customer record here and Adam has two cars and work is going to be associated with a particular car. So we have this customer record open. We have a particular car. We select which one that we want to work with. And what we need inside this gallery here in the middle of the screen is some type of a button or a selection uh, image or icon that will take that variable and pass it into the screen that we're going to develop. So let's do that now. Now, what I like to do a lot of times is I like to go to my trusty screen that I call copy controls from here, and I like to look at the color palette. Sometimes what I'll do is I will just select all these right here and make sure you don't have anything else selected like your spinners or anything. And just go ahead and copy those. Take them up to the screen that you want to work on. Here we go. I'm going to paste these... Uh, these are rectangles with labels on them, and I just want to look at them here. Now, I do have a debugging feature uh, part of my application template, and what I like to do is set up this group's visible property to var show spinner. I'm sorry, show debugging. Okay, so it's not going to display for the user, but I can look at it. Um, Okay, so looking at the screen here, we have a lot of dark reds. I think I'm gonna go with the secondary dark. That would look nice. Um, and I think these other three are gonna look a little too washed out, a little too light. So I'm gonna go with secondary dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this particular button here. All right, I'll hit Control C. We'll go back to that screen. 
Okay, I want to select something inside my gallery. I'll hit paste. There we go. At this point, um, I'm going to want to make this a little bigger. Make sure we have enough space. And I'm going to make the name of the car smaller. I'll put this button here. Now, this button is way too big. Let's say I'm going to go for a height of 30. We'll call that uh, start sale. Now, the font inside of it is a little too big as well. So let's move that to 10. That looks nice. All right, so I'm going to put it there. And I'm going to size this up a little less there. Very good. I think what I'm going to do is make the button visible only if that row is selected. Okay, so we'll say var. I'm sorry. This item dot is selected. And I think I might make the font for the car a little smaller. Just to provide more space there. Now, if there has been previous work, I might have something displayed here. If they want to do work on this Mazda Speed 3, they would click on that. And then they would get that button they can click on. So we are going to click on this button here, and we're going to navigate to the other screen, the new screen that we created, which is Sales Edit Screen. So let's click on that, and we'll click on the name and hit Copy. Click on Action on Select. All right, so we don't really need any spinners here. So I'm going to take that out. So we use the Navigate function. So we'll navigate to this screen here that we have on our clipboard. Now the next parameter is a transition. I personally like Fade. So I think the enumerated value is screen transition, and it is dot fade. So we'll use that. All right, so we're going to pass some parameters into the, this next screen. And uh, the parameters that I like to pass, I like to pass the customer. So we'll say underscore customer. And the customer will be this underscore record. We'll pass that. So this current screen has, is displaying customer information, and it's based, if you click on this text box, you look here, boom, it's it's, it's feeding that off of a record, uh, a record of variable. It's a context variable, which means the context is just a screen. So if we go to the next screen, that other screen isn't going to have that context, so it's not going to be able to get at that value. So we need to pass it in. Now we could create globals, and and to be honest, um, to, to tell you about globals, if you're going to just throw uh, records and variables that screens are going to share like this, um, it can get a little messy. What you'll find is, I mean, look at how many screens we have in this application that's going to grow, uh, is that you've got, uh, you, you might end up with three different type of customer variables because you can't keep them all straight. <laughs> So um, what I like, I, I like to uh, steer away from globals as much as possible and rely on context variables as much as possible. Uh, keeps your application much more clean and maintainable. Uh, highly recommended. All right, so we're going to pass a customer and we use a comma and we're going to say car. And we're going to pass it our current record car. So next screen is going to have the customer in the car. So they should have access to all this information. Let's test it out. All right, so I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to click on the button. Did it pass it? Do we have the values here? Labels are great for this. I'll just bring over a label. And let's put up here customer dot. They have a title? Yeah, very good. There's Adam. And I like to give borders and give a background color to little test labels that um, I'm going to eventually remove. I'll make a copy and paste of that. And let's make sure we've got the car. Car.title. And let's make that much bigger. Very good. So it's passing over that information. So we have all that. Great. All right, I'm going to go up here to the Office Admin Home screen. It's got this little rectangle, and a few of our screens have this. And I like to keep things really consistent with the look and feel. And I just want to copy it. It's a simple rectangle that is a little different in color. To be honest, it actually might be we go and might actually be this primary light. 
Well, let's actually go look. Look at that, it is using primary light. Very good, so it's using colors from our color palette for the current theme. So that's good that we're using that. And it looks like it's the same color as that. Now something you can do uh, with your theming, if you have two colors that are really close to each other, this is gonna be a little bit of a bar up here at the top, and you don't want it to look exactly like that. What I like to do, is do use the function called color fade 35% it does look a little lighter it doesn't look very different to me though now we do have a customer and the car the car being worked on here so how do we want to display this information play here at the top go to a screen like this it's got these little blue squares okay so they're 20 by 20 squares and they only show up for debug testers so I am going to add those to the sales edit screen just to make sure everything's spaced out nice. I have them for each of the corners. I don't want to zoom in a little bit. And let's get this rectangle up right there so everything's lined up nice. Okay, that's looking good. Now, we initially brought over these labels to just see if the data is being brought over properly. And that's pretty much what we're going to display here. I think what I might do is we'll go over to copy and controls from here. We have a, a little label here that we can use. And it uses our, our color theming. Let's say customer. And I'll align that to the right side, and there we go. So it's a customer. I'll we'll label over here for the vehicle. And let's make this 300 just in case somebody has a really long name and we'll want that to be left justified. And um, I think I'd like the back color or the fill of this label that will contain the data. Be something like our theme. And the color that I want to go with is this primary light. I don't know why the percentage is on the other end there. That's sort of weird. There we go. So it's a little darker. There's a little bit of contrast there. That's nice. And then what I think I'll do is we got a little border on this rectangle. And I think I'm going to copy that. There we go. Now, instead of it actually having a, a literal string in there, static string, uh, we'll reference the customer. And uh, there we go, title, which includes our full name. Very good. Now, I will bring this over here a little bit. And um, I would say the a vehicle text will be longer. I mean, if you look at it, it's got the year, make, model, and the color. So it's got quite a bit of information there. All right, so put that there. And we'll say car dot title. Very good. And let's make that more like 400. Now oh, we can get rid of these guys now. All right, going back to this edit customer screen, 
I've noticed yet another bug, which was I completely closed out my project, reopened it, came to this screen. This first record was selected, and I simply clicked on the button. Now, this on select event never occurred because I never selected that record. I just clicked on the button. Now, it did do the select at that point, but for some reason, it didn't actually run the code there. So I'm just going to throw this in here. Instead of using that variable, I'm just going to say this item, and I'll never have to deal with that issue again. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I mean, if I do click on this, click on here, I mean, it is, it is bringing over now, but I just want to let you guys know about that change. So I changed something there. Um, okay. So we're on this screen here. And, you know, something I'd like to add is the current date, the date of the sale. And so we'll say here, date, and we'll say today, very good. Now this could be a lot smaller, let's say 100, let's see how that looks. That's probably a little too small, but uh, maybe 150. And let's put that up there. Now, something that I think would make these three look a little better is setting the left padding to at least 10. I was thinking maybe even 15, but that looks that looks nice there. And then also what I might do, uh, unless I add some more fields, fields here at the top, it's just the date field just doesn't need to be that big. So I'm gonna bring this over and it seems to like that point there. I think I may make this a little smaller. Let's say 70. A lot of times you gotta zoom in to uh, get things exactly right. And I also believe that, um, let's play with the spacing a little more here. The date here, I think I might center align that. Okay. All right, very good. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at the requirements again for this screen. All right, so jobs, uh, orders, and jobs. So we got a one-to-many relationship. An order or a sale has got multiple jobs. Okay. So associated vehicle and owner, we have that. Date, time, the order was entered, created. So we have that. Now, we don't have the time. I think what will happen is once we click the, we'll have a save button at the bottom, is we'll actually grab the time because they might sit there for 10 minutes creating that order. You never know. It could be 30 seconds, it could be three minutes. Um, I actually want to grab the, the time whenever they click the button, whenever the order was created or finalized. Okay, so we're going to hold off on the time for the moment, <clears throat> but we have the date up there. And the date right now is just display it for the user. But the date and time will be grabbed later. Estimated time, um, so we'll put that at the bottom. Estimated time for completion, that'll be at the bottom. So what I'm imagining is we're going to have a gallery. That's funny, when you drag on controls, it always likes to get that, that spinner in there. I wanted some header information for the order, so that's it. And then we're going to have a gallery that will look like a grid, which will have all the line items for the order or for the sale. And these controls, like the, the, the job types here, will allow them to pick one, hit the button, and we'll add it. It's sort of like a shopping cart. So th this, this screen is going to be a, a lot like a shopping cart or a, a point of sale system. So this will be information that would apply to the order. And I'm thinking that will be near the bottom. And a lot of this stuff is going to be dependent upon how many light items they add in that grid in the middle. Date and time totally completed. So that is going to be determined afterwards. So taxes, uh, we'll put that at the bottom of this screen, order total. Okay, so that tells me that we are ready to work on the gallery of the grid. Uh, we're definitely not going to use a data table, I can tell you that. <laughs> All right, so we need to go grab a gallery that we've used in the past that looks nice, that has all the theming and, and everything nice. We're not going to add a fresh new gallery from, from the top here. 
So I'm going to go around and look at the previous screens and find one. You know, I do like this gallery. It's got the images in there and it's got a little bit of formatting in there. I might just use this one and it looks like it's a part of a group. So we have a rectangle. So we've got a, um, a, um, a gallery heading, you know, for the, or the column headings. In this case, it's just one. Um, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. Now the gallery heading um, has some dynamic stuff like the height and stuff. So we don't want to manually adjust the height of those two controls. Uh, so we want to make sure that gallery is selected. We're going to want to make it um, shorter. There we go. And then select the group to move it around. So right now we're going to put this near the bottom and then all these guys make sure that we don't have the spinner group selected. Very good. And I'm going to move this up. And you know what I might do? You see how I've got the labels to the sides up here? And here the labels are at the top. I think I might put the labels to the side like I did these three. I think I might do that. Now what would be really nice, we got three fields up here, then three fields here. It would be nice if we could match the widths of each of those so they would look they would all line up it would be very visually appealing but um, I'm not sure if I want to do that or not uh, the functionality always has to come before the design but it's nice if you can get both so let's try that <laughs> let's move on down to this gallery here let's get all this situated So we're going to take the Y of the gallery and we're going to subtract self dot height rectangle name for the label and set its Y to it. This header is a little too big and bold. I might change the colors of it eventually, maybe make it a little smaller. Yeah, let's make it 30. Pretty good, save. Now the question is, should we put this down here and space it out using that? Maybe. That's good enough for me. Now, if we take those squares away, does it still look nice? And I think so. These line items for this sale. Um, we don't have a SharePoint list or a database table that's going to hold the individual items. Uh, so we need to create that. We also need to create a table that will hold the general sales information, uh, the reference to the customer, the reference to their car. Um, date and the time and all those other fields, the taxes, the order total, date and time completed, all that type of stuff. So we're going to have another really one to many relationship here. Order, an order table and then order jobs perhaps. We would call it order jobs. And for each order you'd have multiple jobs or, or it, you know one too many. <laughs> so you'd have one, two, the possibility of one now you wouldn't have a sale if there were no line items in the sale, right? So someone could come in for an order, say, hey, I just want my oil change. So one order, and then over here you'd have a, a SharePoint list 
or a database table that would have an order ID that would point over to the sale. So in that case, you got one record over here referencing one record, but you have the possibility of them having 50 different line items. Of course, that probably would never happen, but I said all those words to say it's going to be a one-to-many relationship between two tables, two SharePoint lists, and we need to create those. So let's do that. So I am just going to click on one of these and say edit data and it's going to bring up my SharePoint. So click on site contents and it'll show us all of our database tables, database tables, <laughs> SharePoint list. So let's create one TBL. And what I like to do when I'm working with a new list here, that's going to be used as a the database table is I like to bring in that ID and move it over here to the left. All right, so let's add in a number for the customer ID. Very good. It's going to be a number, very easy, simple vehicle ID number. Very good. Order created. Now SharePoint list does have a created field. It's created automatically and it's going to have the date and time in there in which the record was created. Now we're actually going to create this record more than likely before it's actually officially created in the business process. And I'll explain more of that later when we get there. So we'll say order created. It's going to be date and time. I'm going to hit save. Very good. Now, as we create a few, this little thing gets in the way, and I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> if you guys know, let me know in the comments. But I just get frustrated. I just go over here to uh, list settings and create all my fields this way. What else do we have here? Okay, so I need the job type ID. Job type ID, and that's gonna be a number. Now. We have a separate list that has all the job type information in it. Uh, so we're going to reference that by creating this column job type ID. However, for reporting or for displaying general information about this particular order, there are times, especially when you display things within a gallery, you don't want to be doing lookups to a data source with individual rows of a gallery. It will make your application slow. So what I do is if there's information that I frequently, I know that eventually I'll, I'll, I'll be tempted to go do a lookup inside of a gallery, I go ahead and include that information in this particular, the, the, whatever table I'm dealing with. In this case, it's the sales or the orders. So I do have job type ID, but I will also create a new field called job type text. Now, for those of you who have studied database de design, software development work, dealing with databases, this sort of violates normal form, um, the normal form methodology, saying you shouldn't repeat information like this. So the job type text changes. You only have one place to change it. That would be over in the job types table, right? Um, so that's why that rule is set up. If you look at... Uh, database normalization methodologies. But we're dealing with a rapid application development tool and Power Apps has all these upsides and uh, there are certain things that you just sort of, that are workarounds that, like this, where I'm gonna violate normal form, but I also know that if something depends on this, I mean, I mean also I ask myself a question, is that job type text ever gonna change? It could. But if I ever have to change it system wide, I could just do a little system update or look through all the all the sales um, that the that the owner would would care about. Let's say in the last year or something, and just go through and, and change them all. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so we're gonna say job type text, and we're gonna leave that as single line of text. Now, single line of text is 255 characters. Something I want to show you guys. We go into uh, job types. Job type text is going to be this title. It's got the category, the job type, and the subtype. We have a, a order created. We'll say 
order completed. Have you ever gone to a garage, dropped off your car, had multiple things done to the car, and there's a guy you deal with at the counter, and when it's all done, you might be sitting there, or he might tell you to come back at a certain time. But once all the jobs are done on the car, there's a guy that usually works on the inside that deals with the customers, and maybe the last technician will let him, hey, it's done. But it's not the technician that said, okay, all the jobs are done. That guy might look at it and say, oh, you guys forgot to do the, um, put the air freshener on the mirror. <laughs> I don't know. But then that person will take the information or check it off and he'll come in this and go in the system and say, okay, order is complete now. Maybe the last job was done 10 minutes ago, but it wasn't until that the office staff is told by one of the technicians everything's done and he checks things out or he does whatever he does and he comes in and marks it as complete. When they click on a button, Okay, it's really complete. That's what this field is going to be used for. All right, so we'll make that a date and time. Okay, we're going to add in a field for estimated pickup. So this is going to be a time given to the customer. It's like, okay, you dropped off your car. We got several things to do. It's going to take all day. But if, you, if you're here by 3.30, it'll be done by 3.30. That's what this field would be used for. Estimated pickup for the customer, but I'm not gonna say for the customer here because you don't want your field names to be so long. We are going to need subtotal. That's gonna be currency. Then we'll have separate item for tax. Now, now a tax is a percentage. Let's make that a numeric value. I can type in here, tax. Now what we'll also do is have a variable, we'll have a setting system wide that will allow them to input a tax rate and that will be the default value that will be input into this. And perhaps we'll just display it. That we won't allow them to edit the tax, but we want to, store it individually because next month maybe the state tax was increased so they would go to the system-wide variable increase it because you want that historical data to be preserved all right so we'll say number very good all right we do need to add a total to the sale and that will be currency and we'll click okay at the bottom and almost any type of entity I'm dealing with, when I say entity, that could be almost any database table that you're dealing with. I like to add in uh, notes, make it multiple lines of text. And if you're creating your columns this way from the list settings, whenever you create a mul multiple lines of text, you need to go down and make sure this plain text is selected. Rarely will you want to deal with this enhanced rich text. So that's the order information. Now we might need to come back and add one or two more columns, more fields, but I think that's mainly it. I think that's mainly what we need. Now we need to go into site contents and create the mini or the line items for the order, which I believe TBL, <laughs> TBL order, Let's see order jobs. I'll create it. All right. I always like to make sure I see that ID. I'll do that there. We need a number value that's going to hold a job type ID. We also need tech ID, tech assigned ID. How about that? So she had job type, so she has ignition, a start time, time of completion. Okay. Start time. Point where I will go to list settings and finish it there. Let's call it completion time. Take time. And I will also add in, okay, so we'll enter a cost here. Let's make that 
that currency for the cost. And for this, I'm going to put in office notes. And we're going to give this a multiple lines of text. If you can imagine a job, let's say a technician needs to work on tires, replace tires, rotate tires, whatever. And there might be a lug nut lock that's on the wheels and the key to that lug nut lock is in the glove compartment. Uh, perhaps they would actually type that in for the office notes to tell the technicians. So it's sort of a way to communicate from the office to the technicians. Hey, this is something you might want to know uh, before you do the job. And then we'll also add technician notes. So let's say a technician performs an oil change and there was barely any oil in the engine right before they did the oil change. They checked the oil. There's hardly any oil in there. A uh, technician might want to put in the notes so that it eventually is communicated back to the customer. It's like, hey, you really need to check your oil level in your car between oil changes. Uh, that would be a uh, key information that normally might be lost. So that would be something that would be very simple for us to include in here and would add a lot of value to the application. So let's do that. All right, so office notes. Mission notes, we'll say multiple lines of text. Again, with the other table, we might come back here and add or one, two more columns. Um, but I think we're good to go at this point. So we'll go back to site content. So we can just see a list of our, our tables here. And we need to go back to Power Apps and add in those two tables. So let's do that. We'll go in here. All right, so we have orders and jobs. So we'll add those. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to this gallery here, open this up, and this needs to be something completely different. It's going to be the order jobs. All right, very good. We have all these controls that, of course, have errors in them. So this is the delete job so I still want a little delete because as they're creating an order yeah it says delete here um, perhaps why there it's not appearing now I do have it set up so debugging in is selected I want them to see that I want them to be able to delete so I still want that in there okay give me these three labels here and let, let's set up the width of this. Let's not be so dynamic. Make it more like 400. Okay, so what I would like to do, I do want to do a lookup on the job types, but I want it to be an in-memory collection. So whenever the screen loads up, I'll do an action on visible. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, clear. Select TBL job types. Call it COL, short for collection, as a prefix COL to identify collections. Job types. So when the screen loads up, it's going to load up this collection here. And then we'll just use that. I'm just putting this here now. We could actually put this in the app on start so it doesn't go and get this every time the screen loads up. We could do that later, that's fine. Or you could do it now in, in the application that you're building. We are gonna look up an image for that job type. We're actually gonna do a lookup within a lookup. So this is gonna be fancy. Look up on the collection we just created here with ID equals. So we're looking for job type ID. But then we're going to need an image ID. <coughs> Yay. All right. <laughs> I hope that works. 
All right, so that collection that we're just dealing with isn't populated yet. Uh, so let's try this. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, click on the back, click on that. Okay, now, there's no data in this database table, so keep that in mind, but at least we don't have an error anymore. All right, so we're gonna do a little something simple. Uh, we can do something a little similar here. So we're gonna do a lookup. Within our collection and item dot uh, yeah job type ID and then we're gonna look for category. Now it doesn't like this, so yeah, this is like a where clause, so it needs to be ID equals. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm gonna copy that because these other two need something similar in them. Okay. Go to that last error. Alright, what we need to do is get a record in here. So I'm going to add an icon. And we're going to make this white. And we're going to grab the rectangle here that's being used. And for the width and the height, we're going to use that and for the Y rectangle Y and for the X we will use the X of the rectangle plus the width of the rectangle and then we're going to subtract self dot width Now it's a little close to the edge there. So what I will do is a little bit of padding on each of these of about four. I'm not very happy with um, the height of this. I think it should be a little more. I think before it was 50, we brought down to 30. I'm thinking 40 might be a good um, compromise in between. Now, if you look at things here, hmm. okay, that looks close enough for me. For this up here, for the text of this label, this should just be something simple for now, until, unless we decide something different, but order details. And I think the padding should be increased to six, maybe. All right. So happens when they click on the plus. So the plus should take these values and add a new item here. So really what we're interested in is this last value here. Okay, so I'm gonna say DDL, drop down list, job subtype, order edit, job subtype, and go with that. So there's no naming conflicts with any other screens that do something similar. 
All right, so here's the fun part. So we are going to do, first of all, we do need our spinners because we're doing a database operation. So we need to set our var show spinner. Set that to true. And um, whenever we're done, let me set that uh, to false. So we'll do a patch, TBL, order jobs. Defaults. And we need to copy and paste that over here on defaults. So what we're going to do here is we are going to say job type ID and we're going to look at that drop down list and we're going to grab the selected, not the selected text, we want to get that the ID and then we're going to say job type text but we need that, <laughs> we need that comma there. Come on. I know we've got a field for the job type text. I know. <laughs> I could have swore that we did that. Did I put that in the order? I did. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? That is ridiculous. All right. So list settings. No, we don't want job type or job type text because the jobs are individual items within a, an order. So it's one of many relationships. So. We need to take those two things out. Now what we could do, because we don't have anything going into title and title is required. Let's put the title. There we go. Dot selected. Dot text. Pretty good. I'm sorry, that title. There we go. If we entered this, it would be an orphan record because it needs an associated order record to link to. So I like to have that at the top. It's one of the most important fields to populate. So we need a or an order type. Let's go make sure we have that right. I guess we forgot to add this. So let's go ahead and add it. Um, looking at the and all the, the number types. Yeah, I guess we didn't. I'm really surprised we didn't add that. Okay. Order ID. That's what we need in there. So let's add in a number. And that's going to associate the, uh, the child record to the parent record. Very good. That's in there now. Now, because we didn't do that before, we need to make sure we go in here and do a refresh. Do we do the order ID? The question is, what are we going to put there? For right now, I'm going to put a zero. We actually need to add a new record. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What we need to do is check to see <laughs> if there is a current record for this uh, this order. How do we add a new record? We use patch, TBL orders, copy that, because we're gonna need it for the defaults function. For the title of this order, I would like to concatenate the customer, the car, and a date time, but I want to throw that into a variable. So let's do update context. Use an underscore and we'll say order title. So here's customer and we'll say 
Actually, I think uh, yeah, customer has a title. Very good. So I don't have to say first name, then last name. It's probably going to be all there within the title. All right, so we'll add in a dash, spaces. We'll take a look at car, that title. We'll say now, which should give us the current date and time. All right, so say title of the order, it's gonna be that. So I'm gonna create a new record here. As we can see, because we're using the defaults in the second parameter of the patch, that's how we know it's definitely going to be a new record, not, an not an existing record. Now, that patch function should return the record that was just created or updated. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to say update context. I want to say order. And then at the end, I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit format text and I don't need that little comment down there anymore. Okay, this looks, this looks better, I guess. So then I'll take that order and instead of giving it a literal value of zero, I'll say order dot ID. All right, so <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Now we, we have a lot of work to do on this. Let's run this. And let's add it. Anti-lock diagnostics. At least it put in the right job type. That's good. All right. So what we're going to do here, I noticed that my spinner didn't even show up. That's because the menu needs to be brought to the front. And also the spinner needs to be brought on top of that. Let's add another. Actually, we can't add another because I don't want to I don't want to create a, a completely new I don't want to create a new order every time. Okay, so the first one's been created. And what I need to do is check this order. And what we'll say is if is blank, our little order there, if it is blank, we're going to do all this. There we go. So if it is, if that order is blank, it's going to do this. Now, the second time through, it's not going to be blank. So this code won't be executed. When we get down here for this order ID, it's going to use that, that order variable. Let's see if this works. Let me, let me pick a different um, emergency break, emergency break. Very good. Uh, now, in this case, what I like to do is go over here. Well, let's click on let's click on orders. Let's open up the orders. Make sure there is an order. Nope, did not work. Look at that. That's why you need to check. <laughs> yeah, check the data. All right, so we do have two items here. Let's go look. Yeah, the order ID is at the end. I don't like that. Let's move the order ID. It's very important. It needs to be near the top. Okay, so it's looking at one and two. Oh, let's let's add a let's add a third one, and see what happens here. All right. Some we can do without having to go back and forth over to SharePoint to see um, how the data came over. Let's just add in label here and what we're going to do is we're going to say order ID okay so the second and the third time it, well, I should say the third time it worked right okay now we haven't set up this gallery to filter based on the order ID now what I should be able to do is just delete these let's pick a different okay let's do cruise control at it okay I think it's working right now I mean the first time we had different code than the second and the third time looks like it's working fine now so now what we need to do on this is we're going to filter this make sure that the yeah the order ID equals underscore order dot ID very good all right, so we see here from our label, we do have the order ID of, of three. 
So I've gone in and, and tested this yet another time. So it's now to three. So this label isn't going to stay there. Let's just put a border on it and give it a weird background color. That clashes, that will remind us that we need to remove it. So I do know that we do need a drop down in here. Let's use a copy of one of these drop downs. And we'll click on something here and paste. All right, so we need to actually have this drop in. Our TBL users, but we're going to filter this to make their make sure their technicians is technician. Why? Very good. You know what? Let's filter based on the title. Oh, I can tell you right there. <laughs> I should have been a sort. <laughs> so we have our technician. Now we want a good label in there. And what we're going to say is assign to. Okay. Font size will probably make 11. Doesn't need to be so big. Now in this case, um, what happens is by default, this drop down is going to select the very first one. I don't want that. I want the user to explicitly explicitly select a technician, not just be defaulted into one. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take out this one for default. In fact, I, I don't want one for default for anything. I'll just make it a an empty string. Yeah, there's an allow empty selection. And we want to make sure that's true. And then what we want to do, I think for default, what I'll do is let's use blank and see if it if it allows that. And it does. So now if I select someone, it stays, but it doesn't hold it by default. Very good. So we need to enter a cost that we're going to have in here. And we need a good text box. And what I'm going to do is go back to a screen where we're using a text box and pull one of them. So for example, this one here, this works. It's a bit big. So what we're going to do is bring that down a little bit. Uh, in fact, I don't know that I like that label. Let's go with 30. Let's make the font 11. And we need to take out this default stuff here. Um, actually, default should be this item. I'm sorry. We need to do a lookup. Sort of like how we did the lookups on all these other things here. Um, in fact, I'm just going to click on this and copy this over. There we go. Uh, we don't need category. We need default cost. But this text box will allow them to um, edit the default or specify a cost that deviates from the default that's been set for that job type. So we have a width here of 200. I don't know that it, let's go like 220. 220, very good. Now, the information in this text box It needs to be text. Now you think it would be a number, but I want to put a dollar sign and so let's try this out. Okay. So we say text. So we've got a dollar sign in there. And let's put in um, I'm trying to decide if I want to put that dollar sign in there or not, because uh, I'm gonna have to parse that out again, which is no problem. Yeah, we'll leave it in. And what we'll do here zero dot zero zero. I should be good. Okay, so using the text function here, uh, the pound signs are going to allow us to put that in that comma there. So if there are four more digits, 
on the left side of the decimal place, it's going to put that comma in. But if there's not, it's not even a bother. And then what's nice, having those zeros in this text function is that if there are new values, let's say it's a, just a whole number of one, it's still going to put that decimal in the zero, zero there. So just a little bit of background. If you're not familiar with the text function, that's how it works. Let's uh, align it to the right side. And let's put a little bit more padding here. Okay. And let's copy that label. Let's zoom in, make sure it all looks good. Actually, it does. Okay. Okay. So the only thing that we're lacking here are office notes. So we don't need to see this anymore. I thought there were going to be some more things I wanted to add in, but there's really not. All right, let's go get something for the notes for the office. Now, there are more fields, but the, those fields aren't going to be entered here, like the technician notes. Technician notes will enter them on their screens. So here we go. Here's some notes. A little bit big there. Okay. I may not add a label for the notes, to be honest, because what I can do, this little property called hint text is very valuable. Job notes. Now, I don't really don't care for how cr um, cramped it seems at the top. So what I'm going to do is increase from 5 to 10. Looks a little better there. And we could probably decrease the font down to 11. So there's plenty of space. What I'm wondering is if, like, how much does the space the, the scroll bar take up? And visual elements like that might change from browser to browser. Looking good. I like this. I like it. Are there any other things about job types? Like, we could throw, oh, estimated time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to have that in there. So that actually should be in there. Okay. I would like to make this a little bigger. Maybe 110. If I want to space out a little more, let's say 45. Mm. You might need to go to 100. Ooh, ooh. 115, no, 120. I'm not excited about that because, I mean, if, if uh, somebody comes in and have a lot of, somebody comes in, they've got a lot of jobs to be done on a vehicle. I want this screen to be able to handle it. I mean, it will be able to handle it because it's, it's a gallery. It's going to have a scroll bar, but I like them to be able to see uh, most of it without having to use a scroll bar. But, um, Let's zoom in here and, and uh, work with this a little here. So that will be the button. You know what I might do here? Select these three controls and do an align, distribute vertically. Make sure those labels lined up right. Come on, come on. There we go. And also, the job notes should be pulled down a little bit. There we go. I like it. All right. So we need to rename this from cost to hours, estimated hours. And let's pull that out a little bit there. I want to shorten that. And you know what else I might do is space these guys out a little bit since we got a little more room to play with. Well, what's the top of this one? Six. I think I'm going to make this something like 28. And maybe make that like seven. Maybe 26. 
don't know that it needs to be all that big. Um, regarding the font, at least. So we got the delete and the rounded, the border radius, which are the rounded um, corners there, don't need to be so pronounced. So maybe six. Then my question is, so these um, job types that we select on the top there and uh, above the gallery, they have notes for that job type. And I'm contemplating throwing that in there as a default. We would lose this uh, hint text if we did that because hint text shows up. There's nothing in the text box. Could make the height of this image be more like parent dot template height. You could do that. I'm also thinking it could appear over here that they could just copy and paste. Well, I don't know. These are notes, job notes for the technician to read. So they should probably know what these things. Now I could display the job notes on the ticket that the technician prints out. I could do that. I sort of like to display the notes down here just so they, they know that they have um, the right job type, you know? And we've got over a different, um, we have over a hundred different job types and there's a little bit of an overlap. Um, and let's say that there's a good reason for that. Well, the job type notes would probably spell out the, the nuance between the differences between the job types that seem like they're the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to make these more like 20. Yeah. Notes. I would like to give a back or a fill of white, make it a little transparent so they can see something's there. And we'll do something like a, a dotted gray border out of that. And we'll say, we can't call it job notes because we have job notes that they're going to fill in. It's actually job type. Let's call it job type details. Make it vertically aligned top and make the font smaller, at least 10. Sort of want to make this a little bigger, like 130. And now I really don't like that being <laughs> enlarged um, so tall. I'm a little inclined to use another color from our color palette, however. Um, let's see if we brought that over on this. No, we didn't. So let's go down to copy controls from here. And we really don't use a secondary light hardly at all. Okay, so let's try that out. Secondary light. You guys think of that mm. it jives with our theme i just wish it was a little lighter <laughs> so you know what we could do we could use our color fade function and we could cut it by 20 percent and see how that looks i sort of like it um now i i don't like how much padding is in all of these controls here it seems a little more than what's needed Mm, I don't want that carriage turn in there. I think I might go with that. I might actually go with a smaller font, like a nine. Okay, so you notice in this estimated hours, this actually needs to be default. Estimated, yeah, estimated time to us. All right, that's made of time. All right, so we got that set up. All right, so what else about jobs? I think we got all every, all the details that need to be entered about job types or displayed about job types. Now that we made it a little bigger, though, I see the space down here. So let's just sort of move things around a little bit. 
move this down. There we go. And then I'm going to select these three and distribute horizontally. No, vertically. Did that and make sure the cost labels aligned. Come on. Right. Then we'll bring down this text box a little more. Okay, I like it. That's something to pick up. I would like to bring over a date picker, which may seem odd, but there are times when garages will say, this is going to take a few days, maybe an engine rebuild or something. It might be there for two weeks for all I know, right? Two days, something like that. It's not always same day service, right? Maybe they're backed up and say, hey, your AC doesn't work. You got a rental car, drop it off. We might be able to get to it this weekend, something like that. Um, let's try to stick with this 30. We need to bring this down maybe 12 and it doesn't need to be so wide. Okay. Bring down one of these labels. And we'll default this. Make sure the default day is today. That's good. Pick up date. Very good. Now I'm hoping I can put things, not take up so much room at the bottom to allow this gallery to be spread out a little more. Now, <clears throat> this heading up here is a little much. Um, let's set that to 40. And let's grab that rectangle name and make sure this label was set up right. I don't know, I think maybe we should try out 30 for this rectangle. I like it. Um, doesn't need so much padding if we do that. And this doesn't need to be so big. Maybe 11. Might make it bold. Maybe semi bold. <laughs> right. huh. So hard to get it just right. Let's say thirty six. Maybe go with three forty. Looks better. All right. So we have a pickup date. We need to pick up time. Let's take this, paste it here. We pick up time. Of course, that text box doesn't need to be so big. So I would like to help them out and give them a default value to work with. And when I say I'm going to make this simple is I'm just going to take the total amount of hours that they've entered in the order details from all the different jobs that they've added for the hours. I'm going to sum those and I'm going to do a date add, add from the current time, add that to the current time, and that will give us a time. So we need to reference this gallery here. And well, actually, let's just make the sum up here there now. So let's use sum, all items. And I'm going to get at the text box. You know, might as well name it properly, txt sales details est hours. That'll be the name of our text box. So over here, we can reference that. Yeah, I, I needed to separate that out inside the sum. Now let's let's enter 10. Oh, I can tell you right now we don't need um, we don't need dollar signs. We don't need comma places. That should be good. 
All right, so let's say one hour here and two hours there. You see it gave us three, that's nice. All right, so let's format the sum with text. And I definitely want the want it to be a decimal place there. I, I don't need to format it. I, I just need the numeric value and I need to do the date add. Okay, so we do date add. And the date is gonna be, let's say right now, number of units is what we're getting from sum. And then the unit is actually hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? What is, okay, I see maybe what's going on is that it's too um, narrow. And it is, okay. And so we have the date add. We're gonna add the numeric sum value. We're gonna add that to the current date time in terms of hours number of hours and now what we want to do is do a text and inside there it's just going to be our hour minute minute a.m. p.m. that'll be the pickup time and I'm gonna say mm, estimated pickup time if you're gonna give them a day it's gonna be definite the time is probably going to be less definite, but let's make that a good 160. Okay. So we still need to add subtotal, tax, and total. And then I wanted there to be notes for the sale. So for the order. So for example, this would be office notes just for office use for the office admins that deal with the, the customer. Perhaps the customer had special instructions or had special instructions like, hey, instead of calling me when it's done, call my wife, she'll come pick it up. That would go in the order notes. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna have all that space, but this is, this is probably good here. I think I might stack these, the, the date and the time. Let's go with 40. That may not be. Oops. Let's go with 130. We're probably going to need at least 135. So it doesn't look cramped. There we go. Make this 135. Something looks like it belongs there. That looks good to me. Maybe a little lower. I can't quite get there, can I? It's always trying to line it up with something. <laughs> All right, I do like it spaced around there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take this down to Maybe 80, that might be a little too much. Let's go 78. And let's go 24. All right. It's looking good. All right. The problem is that we've got subtotal, tax, and total, total amount for the order. All right, so let's Let's say uh, subtotal. And we're actually going to do something very similar the way we did it here. We're going to do it with cost though. So let's use the name of that text box. Move it up here. Cost. And I'm going to use a similar text function to what we have here. This string, put it here. Now, we may not be able to do a sum 
for a text. <laughs> That's got <laughs> what? <laughs> what <laughs> happened? <laughs> How did we get <laughs> to one million six hundred forty-three dollars? Well, one million six hundred forty-three thousand two hundred twenty. We're gonna substitute. Okay. Any dollar signs? I want to take that out, and it does not like that. Substitute. There we go. Okay, we got zero dollars, and we're gonna sum that together. What is going? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm doing a date ad. <sighs> of course. There we go. That's looking right. All right. So if this is twenty dollars, and this is let me keep the dollar sign in there for this one, one hundred. There we go, hundred twenty dollars. Very good. Let's look in the app on start because I believe that we have a variable. Well, we have a group of variables that are default values for the application, so we need to create one in here. Bar default tax rate. This is going to be a decimal value, zero dot ten percent, perhaps. Or state sales tax aren't usually that round. Let's let's use something like seven point two five. I don't know why I put a, a dot in there because the default we have here is uh, California. So let's use seven uh, seven two five would be that be dot zero seven two five. All right, so we got that, and we will take. Grab that variable. Now, we'll actually need to rerun that to get that. So actually, instead of doing that, I'm going to go. I'm going to add a temporary button. I'll run that. Copy and paste these controls here and use them for sales tax. There we go. And then we are going to use that variable that we set up. And what we're going to do, we use that text function. It's funny, we actually need to multiply that by 100 if we're going to put a percent sign there. So we'll get the percent. And when we use what the enter for the percent, We'll strip out the percentage sign, then divide by 100 to give us that. Now the question is, should we allow them to change the sales tax? Because perhaps we shouldn't allow them to change it here. Perhaps we should allow it to only be changed globally. Uh, you don't want somebody to go in here and accidentally change that. If they go to a completely different screen as an application administrator and they change it in that screen, uh, it would probably feel a lot more deliberate. Like I'm definitely changing this, you know, as a far as as opposed to here, maybe they click on and accidentally hit something. So I think what I'm going to do is change this to disabled so they can see it. <laughs> Can't change it. Get rid of this button. That looks really out of place. So let's create a total. Now we don't need... There we go. We didn't need so much space. Very good. All right. Subtotal sales tax. And uh, let's make this 100. 100. And we will call this sale total. And we'll make sure that's up against that text box there. Zoom out, make sure that looks right. Sale total. We want to add a place for, for notes here. Um, 
let's let's use this little text box and we'll put it down here and we'll call this um yeah that's gonna look good top notes so we'll call this <clears throat> order notes Feels weird, but there it feels like there needs to be something there. Now we need to have a save button or a, a, like a finalized order. Uh, and I typically like to put it in the lower right corner, but in a case like this, we're really hurting for space. There's a lot of space right up here that isn't being utilized. I think I might put it up there. Let me go find a button that I'd like to use for that. I think our default button would look nice there. Let's um, let's use that. And I'll say something like final eyes sale. I make it a lot wider, like 220. Ah, oh, all right. Let's. Here we go. Give it a good name button. Sales edit. Finalize sale. Very good. That'll be the button that they click on to finalize the sale. Because I copied this from in here, I noticed that there was some stuff left over. I think for right now, I'm just going to take that out. I think this is residual stuff from something we copied from a different screen. Um, I'm a little concerned that we lost our images for job types. I don't know why that happened. Let's look at, because I think we have this on the visible here. Yeah, we put that in job types there. So I'm wondering what happened. I don't see it there either. I think what we did is we messed with the app on start. And because we did that, we lost some things. All right, so I just reran the app on start. And what I do want to do is do the finalize sale code. That's what I want to do. <laughs> all right, so, all right, what we have here, as they add items down here in the gallery, that's when the order is actually created. Right here, actually. So if there was no order, so we just, a few moments ago, from the customer screen on their car, we, we clicked on create order. So it should have created a new order. So for example, we're going to use that. And over here on customer listing, Start sale on select that car. Okay, so that order that needs to be, I would say, just use a blank, make sure it's blanked out because you're actually saying start, start sale, <laughs> a new sale, not bring up the one that was on there a few moments ago. So let's go back to our sales at a screen. Now it is really reset, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's go to our customers. Okay, looks like we need to uh, make sure our menu's on top. And our spinner. There we go. Very good. Now we will go to customers, go to Adam, start a new sale, and here we go. All right, so we'll add the anti-lock diagnostics. All right, so we'll add those two back. We'll assign one of me and one to someone else. Cost 20, estimated hours 1, here we'll say 100, here estimated 2, job notes 2, all right, so we are at a subtotal of $120, now we need the sale total to be spot on, 
So what we'll do is we will take what we had here before and then we need to multiply it. We should probably use a with function. Yeah, with, and we're going to call this subtotal. But we don't need the text thing. What we need is just the value. Right? Mm, something's not right here. What is the deal here? Um, I know I need an expression. We need to use a subtotal. Mm, yeah. So our curly brace needs to be here. Nope. OK. And then we multiply it by that. Uh, that's going to be our tax rate. <laughs> or that's how much taxes need to be added. Okay, so I'll do another with. Ooh, no. Tax to add. So now I'll say subtotal plus tax to add and now we need to format this actually I'm just gonna go grab this format text for the second parameter of the text function there and utilize it over here there we go you know what I could do, I sort of like the idea of this, is I bring this down because it seems like something needs to go down there. Okay. Bring something like this up here. that bring it up here there we go yeah we'll just use this all right and it would make me happy if this is lined up Okay, there we go. All right, so what I did was I took the X that was in here, which was 809, I added it to the X of the gallery, which gave me this. So now I'm going to move, change the width. Make it look like it belongs there. Okay, I like it. And this button is really big and in your face. Um, I think I might take that down to 35. And decrease that font size a little bit. Maybe down to 13. It looks nice. And also I might... Now if I... Sort of like that. All right. All right. This button has the border radius of 10. I think I might turn that down to 6. 
All right, so we have some code that we need to put into this final sale. Now, there's something that we should pay attention to right now, which is they should not be clicking on this until there are some line items and maybe some certain fields that need to be filled out first. But I can tell you right now what we could do inside this little plus button. We check to see if this order is blank. Let's just copy this little if statement here because what we need to do for this finalized sale is go into the display mode. And if it is blank, let's go ahead and open this thing up here. We'll say display mode dot disabled. Very good. The comma. And we'll end that with the parenthesis. Hit format text. No errors. Makes it look a little prettier. All right, we should be good now. So because we've added two line items here, we know that it's not blank. What else should we check besides if that variable has been initialized for the order? We can check out this about this thing right here, this sale total. So let's rename it TXT order edit, which will identify the screen. I'll say sale total. So we use that and go up here. So just because it's been initialized just isn't good enough. So what we need to do is we'll say value, which will get the numeric value out of that text box. And we'll make sure it is greater than zero. I'm gonna use that little AN keyword there. I like to put my ands as the first line. Okay, now let's look at things here. If I make the cost of this to be zero and the cost of this to be zero, we should have zero there. Now, I think what's going on is because we have a dollar sign in there. Oh, <laughs> perhaps I should have checked to see if it is zero. If it is zero, then it is disabled. So I don't know that we really needed the substitute to take out because I think the value is good enough to know if there's a dollar sign in there, you're fine. If it's blank. Okay, I see what's going on. This needs to be an or. <laughs> okay, so this is what we need here. In the display mode property of the button, is we check to see if it's blank, or if the order, the sale total is zero, the value of it is zero, then we're gonna disable that button. Otherwise, it's gonna become enabled. Look at that, okay. So now we can get rid of this label. So now as soon as I give it a value here, this is gonna become enabled. All right, so let's assign this to some people here. So I just wanted to put some notes. I want to make sure I fill everything out because what we need to do now is put code behind this button that's going to actually save all the data. All right, so the first thing I want to do, we need to make sure we're looking at the on select and we have spinners here. So we're going to do some database operations. Might take one second, might take five seconds. So we want those spinners to come up and I'm going to make sure that my menu's on top and I'm also going to make sure my spinner's on top. Very good. And what we're gonna do is a patch. So we're gonna patch the TBL order. And by the time we get here, we always know that there's gonna be an order. So we're not gonna use the defaults function as a second parameter, which will give us a new row. So if you don't use defaults, typically you can use a lookup. ID equals what is it, the uh, yeah, this underscore order is what we're looking for. ID, that will give us the record. Now, here's where we do all the work. <laughs> so let's go look at this little plus button and see what all we do here. We should probably do this right here. So I'm gonna paste that over. I actually like this better because after the patch is done, the patch will return the record that it patched. So it's actually going to put it back in this variable, which is nice. So I'm going to use that. But instead of defaults here, I'm going to use what we have here. There we go.
All right, so the title is done there. Um, because the title has already been done, I don't know that I want to do anything with the title because it's already been set. So I'll comment that out for now. I might actually remove that. All right, so I've got on another screen all the columns that we have for this table, the SharePoint list. I'm going to go down, make sure all these are set up here. So the title, we have customer ID. So this is interesting. Why aren't we setting that down here? Yeah, that's a big question, huh? It's a good question. Customer ID. Okay, we need a comma on that line before otherwise it's not going to help us out here. Customer dot ID. Yeah, that should that should have already been there. There we go. Vehicle ID. This thing here. Yeah, we pass a car, which is a lot easier to type than vehicle because it could be a van or something other than a car or truck. But uh, car is fine. <laughs> so that should be in here as well. Yep, we need that comma. Otherwise, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be stubborn. There we go. Car. Dot ID. All right, so we've got that as well. Now, like this title, these two should already be done as well. So we really shouldn't be assigning them again. That should those those values shouldn't be changed. So it's good that we're going through this because we're realizing we didn't have it in the other place. Okay. So we got vehicle ID. What else? Order created. So this is a good thing here. Order created. Now this is different from the created field, which is a SharePoint field that tells us when that record was created. This is when they actually finalize the order. Okay, so we're gonna put now. Now in our table, we set up a job type ID and a job type text. I created those two fields in error. I meant to create them in the many relationship. I'll show you what I'm looking at here, okay? So this job type ID should not be there. And what I do when I publish this video, I'll show a complete listing of all the fields in both the tables so you can check and make sure that your SharePoint list or if you're using SQL Server make sure all your fields are set up properly and you didn't make any mistakes that I did so that those those two fields um, at least this one the job type ID is going to be here and then that job type text is going to be in that title so we don't need those two we're going to have a different screen for them to mark it as complete once the final technician is done estimated pickup we definitely need to put that in there I was going to have that comma in there. Okay, so we're going to we're going to use um, estimated pickup. We'll grab the date out of this. Date order edit pickup date. selected date out of the date time picker. And then what we're gonna do is put in a space <clears throat> and we're gonna grab the time out of this text box here. So TXT order edit estimated pickup time. All right, so we're going to use a function date time value. So we're constructing a string, but this estimated pickup is expecting a date time value. So that took care of that. Subtotal. <laughs> Need that comma. I keep forgetting. All right. Subtotal. Nope. TXT order edit. Subtotal. Very good. Yeah. 
And let's use the value function. We have tax. We're going to rename this txt edit sales tax. <clears throat> That is a number, so we need to make sure it's gonna be the cleanest way of doing that, rather than trying to strip the percent sign out and dividing by a hundred and all that stuff. So we'll just use that. Right, and we have a total. I think instead of just throwing that variable in there, that will probably be the same thing over long spans of time. Is I think what might be more useful to see is this tax added here. So let's go in and name this text box. Let's see, yeah. Let's go in here and say txt order edit underscore tax added. Let's use that instead. And we're going to use a value function. Very good. <clears throat> and then the total is right here in this text box. So let's make sure it's name order edit sale total. Very good. All right, let's make sure this notes text box is set up by txt, order, edit. Office notes. Very good. Now the question is, do we have anything in here that should have been put in here when we added these line items? And I think as long as we have this title, custom ID, and vehicle ID, uh, I think we should be good. All right, so inside this button, we need to add code that will loop through all the items within this gallery. And we'll use the for all function for that. Whenever I do a for all, I always like to make sure that uh, a single execution works fine. So for example, I am going to go in here and add an icon. And we'll make it the save icon. And for now, I'm going to make it green. And uh, I won't be keeping this button here, more than likely. I might hide it. But I just want to test out and make sure that I have a good patch function, uh, an expression that I'll later use in a for all that will work. So um, I really don't like that color. So var theme. Primary dark. So we'll go into the action on select. And I think I'm going to copy this that shows spinner. Whenever you do a database operation, we just want to make sure that's in there. Right. So do a patch. And it's TBL order jobs. And if you don't use the default, you're probably using a lookup. Now we could use the keyword this item instead. <clears throat> but because we're going to copy and paste this code over into something that's not going to be inside the gallery, I'm not inclined to use that. So build order jobs. And we'll match up the ID with this item. Now we'll replace the, this item later on. This item dot ID. All right, now, we now we're just going to update everything here. So the title has already been set and saved. The job type ID has already been set and saved. Let's make sure that is correct. Always double check, verify. So we got these three things set. So I'm going to copy those and just so we know that they have been set. All right, we have tech assigned ID. Now we're going to go over and get this little drop down here. Order edit job. Okay, so this should be tech assigned. Uh, selected. Dot ID. Start time. We will not set here. The technician will do that. 
completion time, the same thing. Cost, we will put in here. Order edit. Cost. I might have actually say job cost. Wrap a value function around it. Something that I'm upset with myself about is that we have the cost in here. I have no estimated time for completion. That should be in there. So this is going to be decimal of hours. So I'm going to say estimated hours hour, uh, number. Click OK. And when we do such a thing, add a new column like that, we need to make sure that this is refreshed. No biggie, no biggie. Estimated hours, txt, order, edit, job, estimated hours. And we are going to have to use value. We should at least. All right, I think the only other thing that um, is edited on this line in the notes, so txt, order, edit, job, call it job notes. I think in the SharePoint list it is called office notes. So these are notes from the office workers to the technicians. And we don't have the name of that text box, right? So we'll make sure we get that. Very good. Now over here, we added some columns for the customer and the vehicle, but we did that for the order. We need to do the same thing down here. And we need to remind ourselves that we actually did do that previously. So we know that's taken care of. Office notes, tech notes, order ID, yes. Customer ID, vehicle ID, estimated hours, which we have right there. And that's it. All right, so we have this code that does all this. Now let's try this out. Uh, okay, so cost $50, it's gonna be one hour. Okay, so for up here, I'm gonna hit the save button and we should see this, you see that little spinner? What we need to check on are the defaults for this. Our defaults aren't set up right. So this drop down list is looking at the title. Now, generally, I'd really frown on using a lookup inside of a gallery, um, but keep in mind this gallery is only going to have one to a half a dozen items, just a few items. Also, this lookup I'm going to do is on a table that will probably always have less than 25 uh, people in it. Okay, so TBL users, we're going to do a lookup. On the ID, we'll say this item dot technician assigned ID. And what we need is the title. There we go, there's Abigail. Okay, so the default here will be this item dot cost. Very good. Very good. So the reason I blinked everything out was that we didn't have all the defaults set up for these controls. All right, let's do a little test. We'll set up Johnny Doe again. The cost will be 100. Hours will be two. And we hit that save. There we go. Now we can go in here and say one, one, one. Hit the save button again. Two, 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 save. We should be good. All right, now that we know we've got a good block of code, a good expression here. I'm going to copy that. Now open in our finalized sale. We need to make sure everything has been saved in the line items because this little save button isn't going to be visible to the user 
And there's no reason for them to hit save, 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 because it's going to get saved when they finalize it. So I'm going to say var show debugging. So if you're a debug user and you click on that, you would be able to do that if you wanted to. I'm not ready to, to delete that button anyway. Okay. So I'm going to do it for all. And we need the name of the gallery. And let's actually finally give this gallery a good name. A gallery order edit jobs. These are jobs inside the order. And up here, inside of for all, or for all, we're going to go through that. And we're going to say all items, all items within the gallery. Now I'm going to assign an alias to this result set. And I call it my, I do this whenever I do a for all. That's what I recommend. There for a long time, I used the this record keyword. And we're, so we're, I'm going to use this alias in the second parameter for the in the for all and inside the expression. But I found an alias uh, works best, and that's what I use. So just want to explain that. All right. So we have a good patch function. Very good, and I'm going to select everything and hit tab. It's indented over. Now, every time you see uh, this item, you type my. It's very important that if you see any control names, this this could be a big source of a bug. Make sure you use that my dot. In fact, I'm going to copy that my dot and make sure every control is prefixed with that. Because if you don't use the my dot, what it's going to do, it's going to go to that first record and reference the control out of the first record. So you might have code that's going to loop through and just grabbing the stuff out of that first record. And then you've got a bug and you're trying to figure things out. And that's never fun. Okay. This should be good. Now, after the for all, we do want a semicolon and we should be good now. We're going to save. Whenever you accomplish something, you hit that save. So you get that restore point. Just in case everything happens, you can roll back to that restore point. Even though PowerApp should be saving every two minutes, it's not creating that restore point every two minutes. All right. Now, let's test it. Finalize sale. There we go. Now, if they finalize that sale, the technicians are going to be alerted. Like, hey, there's something to be done here. The car's up there ready to be worked on. I don't want them to change something in this order and hit finalize sale again. Uh, it's going to mess with the, the business rule process that we're going to develop here inside the application. So what I want to do is let's look, let's add a label here and I want to take a look at a value temporarily. And it's going to be underscore order, order created. All right. So what I want to do is check to see if it's not blank. Okay, so display mode, and I'm gonna go in here. Or is blank. And I'll use the not operator, the bang operator right before that. If that value has been set, I don't want them going in here and trying to finalize a sale again. This has all been saved. This is all good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to the customer. I'm going to start a new sale. See how it's blank. I just want to make sure this is this blank. Well, that is true. All right. So we're good. Now, something that we should still do for this screen is for all of these controls here at the bottom that allow them to modify details of this order, uh, for each of these, we do have defaults set up. However, what happens if we have a order listing screen, let's say orders that are open during the day and they need to go in and look at them. Uh, instead of just bringing up, let's say that this was set for uh, to be picked up tomorrow. Uh, we don't want today's date to be put back into this field. So each of these fields down here, for the default, it needs to check if there's already a value for the variable. So for example, if order, let me just comment this out just for a moment. If the order pickup, estimated pickup, and we're going to grab the date val. 
Actually, we're going to check to see if it is blank. Okay. If it is blank, we are going to use that today. If it's not, we're going to use that value. Does that make sense? Now, we're going to do something very similar to this. Okay. Now, let's just format that. There we go. Take that out. Take that out. So it's actually going to use that. I'm going to hit format text again. All right. So if it is blank, it's going to grab this. Otherwise, it's going to take that. Um, and I think I might want to say, there we go. And then for this, we're going to use that same format string, and we should be good. There we go. So that one's done. Same thing here. If this blank order dot subtotal. It is blank. Use this. If it's not blank. We're gonna actually gonna use the value order subtotal. Now, just think about something. Let's say we pulled up an old order from years ago, and the sales tax was different. I'd sort of like to know the tax rate. So I think what I'm gonna put in here, put into our order table, is a place where we hold that for historical purposes. You have to have. You want that to be accurate. We'll go ahead and put that in real quick, and I'll put in uh, the column as state tax rate. Have that be a number. Go ahead and refresh on the order. Let's go ahead and grab that. There we go. It's in there. No problem. All right, down here. If this blank order dot state tax rate, if it is blank, we're going to use that. Otherwise, order dot state tax rate. Very good. If is blank. Order dot the tax. If it is blank, we will use that. Otherwise, order dot tax. And we'll go down to the total and we'll do the same thing here. Let's click on format tax. Let's see. Yeah, I probably would have spread that out a little bit. There we go. If is like and it's gonna be order dot total and let's indent this over and so we will say order order dot total Right, so the default for this last field here for the notes, if is blank, if it is blank, nothing, order, notes, here we go, and we'll open that up. Format it. All right, so what comes next after this screen? We have, for the office admins, we've got all these screens to manage users, customers, whatever. But 
perhaps what they need is a screen to see all the orders, see all the orders that are open for the day or all the everything that's happening inside the garage. So they could click on an order, come in and see all the details for the order to see who it was assigned to, see how much total was, when they're coming back, all that type of stuff. Also, if you think about it, if we go back over to the customer screen, if this if this particular car or any particular car has been worked on in the past, perhaps we can make use of this space down here in this gallery, bring it up a little bit and actually have a gallery full of all the different things that have been done in this garage for that car. If you found anything in this video helpful, we would really appreciate you click on that like button. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of Power Up struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power Apps Deep Dive Masterclass.